This video is going to be a film study look at some of the young edge players, defensive ends, outside linebackers that the Lions utilized in Saturday's game against the Jaguars. Look, I, I make no bones about it. James Houston IV is one of my favorite players in the NFL. He is. Uh, but he's but to be real, he's also one of just a number of, of talented edge players on the Lions roster, guys that are competing with each other on a daily basis, but then obviously in preseason games to, to get more reps, to get more snaps. Now, during Saturday's Week 2 preseason game, I thought Houston, Josh Paschal, and Julian Aquar kind of stood out uh, among that group. I'm omitting Frank Kaminsky from this group. I'll do a separate video on him for Monday, but because he's a little older, number one, because I think he's should be recognized as a starter. Uh, those three guys were really, I thought, you know, some of the bright spots in a kind of kind of boring loss to the Jags, 25 to seven. Lions clearly sat out, you know, nearly all of their starters, and then. A large number of second-string guys in some cases, too. I thought Houston stood out six tackles, four TFLs, played with a lot of force. I, be I believe he's got eight quarterback pressures, maybe it's seven in the two games. Credited with one sack against the Jags. Made a great play out in space on Jags rookie running back Tank Bigsby, who's who's super talented, if you ask me. Uh, Josh Pascal had two tackles, a half a sack. I think he had another quarterback hit. Made Also made a really nice play kind of out in space. On a, on a bunch screen to uh, Brenton Strange, the Jags rookie tight end from uh, Penn State. And then Julian Aquara, who had three sacks in the first preseason game against the Giants the week before, had one wiped out via penalty um, on a player in coverage against the Jags. Could have been his fourth sack of the preseason. Let's get to some of the film. Got them in order that hopefully makes sense. So this is going to be third possession. And this is a third and one. Pascal is up here. Third and one from the negative 23. And it's going to be complete to the bunch side to Brenton Strange. It ends up being a three-on-three -three when the ball is caught. I like Pascal's pursuit. And look, you know, I'll point this out. And I'll do a, I'll do a video on Jack Campbell again this week. But his pursuit from the inside out is, is consistent. It's always there. He's going to show up to the football. In this case, a little bit late. But they're giving a little bit of a, a run fake to the side that Jack Campbell's got to respect. But look at Pascal becoming the fourth guy there in terms of the fourth line's defender. Some. A lot of football is just about math. You get the fourth guy there a little bit earlier, and you've got to stop perhaps on a third and one. But maybe the quarterback keeps the ball and hands it off to the running back if that fourth defender, Pascal, you know, hedges out to the bunch side. Hopefully that I said that in a way that makes sense. But in any case, Pascal showing some of his agility and ability to move and pursue from an inside-out position. It ends up being a four-yard gain, obviously, for Strange, and the Jags get the first down. All right, a little later. Same possession, third possession. Uh, Pascal is here. This is going to be the inter interception by Stephen Gilmore. It's a second and 13. He's going to give a pass rush up on the top side. Not necessarily saying that he wins this, but his get off compared to Romeo Aquara, who's at the bottom, is a little bit faster. And I don't think Pascal is known for his uh, incredible get off like, like a Julian Aquara or like a James Houston IV. Cool play where Tracy Walker III is able to read, you know, where the quarterback is going with the football. You can see he's clearly looking at the route for the moment, identifying what the route is, plays it, ball shows up. Unfortunately, he isn't able to catch it, but Stephen Gilmore is. Pretty cool moment. I didn't realize Stephen Gilmore was Stephen Gilmore's uh, brother. All right, fifth possession I thought was really unique. I thought it was a, a real bright spot for these three guys. And, and Benito Jones, who's a D-tackle that I think is in his third year. Really, it should be his fourth year, but I don't think he played in 2021. This is a long drive by the Jags for a 6 nothing lead. Check out. Now, the um, Lions are in a unique alignment. This is James Houston, the fourth. And then this helmet right here is Jack Campbell. He's walked up on the tight end. We're not necessarily going to talk about him here because he's certainly not winning the battle against 85. But look what James Houston does to 86. 86, I believe, is Garrett Prince. And you get the end zone angle of this, too. I think this is intentional, what the Lions are doing. I think they've asked James Hughes, and you'll see another play where they do the same thing uh, later on, on the, I think the fifth possession. Same possession, I should say. He's taking on Garrett Prince and basically destroying the block. And then the DB is almost running into the same guy. He does it twice on the two plays that I showed. It almost looks intentional, but we're focusing this on James Houston. I'm talking about intentional in terms of, you know, basically a double team on the outside tight end and knocking him on his butt. James Houston, the fourth, just destroys it, gets a TFL. I thought Houston was extremely disruptive the other day. I know that in some cases, he's you know, he's not playing against 
starters or maybe even second string guys, but what, check out what he does. And then the cleanup hit, I guess, looks like a guy in a fight on the street coming up and hitting somebody from behind or from the side. The cleanup hit just really takes 86 out of there. Garrett Prince, great play by James Houston IV. Again, I'm a huge fan of him, uh, but I thought his play warranted being highlighted in this video, even though Pascal and Julian Aquara also had moments as well. All right, a couple of plays later, same drive. I think you get a sack by Pascal. And I think this is Benito Jones here. I think they split this sack. This one counts. The next sack I'll show you uh, does not. So first and 10. Nobody's really winning off the bat, but I like to give credit for defensive guys to be able to play off of blocks. I think this is Blake Hance over here, who's a was a guard. And I think maybe he's playing some guard and tackle. But he's done a pretty good job at first, and then Pascal was able to redirect and get in on the sack with uh, Benito Jones. This was a nice possession, especially early on, for these young, you know, DNs, outside outside linebacker guys. And then it's ruined on the next play by a penalty and someone in coverage. So this one, you've got Kaminsky over here all the way to our right. Julian Aquara here, and I believe that's Benito Jones there. My bad. All right, so this is a second and 10, very next play. And Aquara is going to get a sack. I think this is an intentional pick late. Uh, sometimes these are early. The, the timing of this seems a little bit late. And I don't mean like Malcolm Rodriguez did something wrong. He's stunting over the top here. And he ends up running into this left tackle. And what it allows Julian Aquara to do is engage the tackle and then go underneath, basically dip underneath late after the pick by Malcolm Rodriguez. You can see Rodriguez's helmet. He's stunting across the center in the left guard's face now. Run Appears to me to run into the left tackle intentionally. And then Julian Aquar gets involved in the sack and Benito Jones is there. I'll let you see it full speed one more time. I'm going to share these on Twitter too. I'll try to package them up um, in one continuous video and share them on Twitter. It'll probably be like a minute and 30 long. Unfortunately, there was an eagle, illegal contact on... Um, one of the coverage element pieces downfield kind of ruined a brilliant showcase for these these edge group guys. All 22 from the same angle. That's Julian Aquara, and that's Malcolm Rodriguez. Again, he's gonna he's gonna kind of stunt across, and then somewhere in this area here, he's going to intentionally run into the left tackle, and that allows Julian Aquara to loop underneath. Maybe it wasn't as... That, that view doesn't really make it look like it's... There are plenty of t situations where people do that intentionally, and, and Malcolm Rodriguez's leverage, once he gets to the tackle, kind of looks like he's trying to run into him. In any case, it would have been Julian Aquara's fourth sack of the preseason, uh, wiped out, and a, another half sack for Benito Jones would have given him a full sack for the game, one full sack for the game. All right, the ensuing play, man, this is great. James Houston, the fourth up here against twins, rather than, you know, take one safety and roll him down, maybe roll the other safety back, it's a two-by-two two formation. So the Lions are trying to keep two guys in the coverage element, corner safety, to that wing side, tight end wing side, which is what that is. So they apex uh, James Houston to four. He basically is the will linebacker in a 4-3 in this alignment, even though he's a 3-4 OLB. This is a great play on Tank Bigsby. I think his pass reads a little messed up. If he's out in this position, he should be looking at the tackle, uh, the left tackle. And I feel like the tackle tackle doesn't give him a, a muddy read like he reacts to. That's the tackle right there. Watch James Houston at fourth. Pretty clear that that's not a run block by the tackle. And in any case, James Houston at fourth. This is just like a drill you do with linebackers. He came forward, and he's going to hustle back to get in his pass drop, zone drop out in the flats. Gets eyes back on the quarterback. He's got really good instincts, man. I, I totally disagree with people who say he doesn't do a good job covering people out in the flats. And by the way, this is I think this is almost the same area of the field. Maybe it was somewhere up in here where he made a tackle on Justin Fields last year on a somewhat similar play where he dropped in coverage and then came downhill to make the tackle on Justin Fields. I, I might be wrong. Maybe it was maybe it was on the other side of the 50, but I think it was somewhere around the 35. Great play, I thought, and it's another tackle for loss. One yard loss. And Tank Bigsby, I mean, athletic dude, played great. I thought he gave the Lions problems. Same drive. This is a first and 10 from the 45. Here's James Houston at fourth, and there's Kaminsky. Kaminsky's going to get the sack. But what I love about this from a James Houston at fourth perspective is he's got a great speed rush, 
right? And look at him. He's framing this right tackle up with his inside hand. I love the physicality. And that low center of gravity allows him to kind of get, get up under him. Uh, not necessarily a forklift move, but he's just re really getting up under him, you know, driving him up under like with a, with a shovel and pushing him back. And Kaminsky's the beneficiary, I think. James Houston, of course, is doing a nice job of collapsing the pocket here. And then Kaminsky slides underneath against the right guard, gets the sack. Give you the end zone angle. Same play. James Houston to fourth. Kaminsky. I hope I have to do 10 James Houston to fourth videos this year. I hope he gets 10 sacks. But they got so many talented guys, man. He's in a competition to just try to get on the field, which is a good thing. All right, that was the next to last play that I'm going to show you from that fifth possession. Ends up being a field goal like uh, for the Jags. I said, Like I said, it puts them up six to nothing in the second quarter. Last play is that same alignment. Two tight ends. And they got James Houston in fourth, and again, Jack Campbell. And it's very similar to what they did last time, they being the Lions. James Houston in fourth takes on 86, and then a DB tries to hit 86 late. They're just trying not to give them that off tackle. Everybody likes to do this. James Houston in fourth is in there on the tackle, multiple other guys. Jack Campbell's not one of them this time. Usually he's at the bottom of the pile. It's a couple of DBs and a D and, and a D tackle. Most teams like to do this. And um, in terms of the scheme, what they want to do is they want to take everybody down. They want to just pin everything inside so that this running back can then bounce outside off the edge. And and off screen over here, you've got a corner. They want to, what they want to do is they want to force a corner to make the tackle. Normally you would get you know, the linebacker, this, this time he's got a two-way go. He's got an open window here, obviously. You know, he might fold over the top if that's where the running back's going to go. This gives the running back the option to cut it out late. In any case, James Houston to fourth, and two other DBs are there to stack it up. Last play for James Houston to fourth. First possession of the third quarter. Third and four. It's up against, I think, a third string right tackle here, Cole Van Lauren or Van Lennon. I think he's a Wisconsin guy. Ends up making contact with three people on this play. This is one of the things I noticed about him last year, and there's certainly plenty of other guys. And again, Jack Campbell's there to try to finish it off. They didn't give Campbell any credit for that play, but one of the things I noticed about James Houston the fourth is his ability to play through and off contact. I mean, he's got the right tackle here. He's trying to chop him. Makes contact with the running back. Reevaluates after spinning where things are, gets engaged by the guard, and then still makes the sack. Yeah, none of those guys is going to be a starter, but it just shows you what he's capable of, and he did it in the regular season against starters. I'm obviously a huge fan, so it's okay if you're not as big a fan of James Houston IV as I am. I thought Josh Pascal and Julian Aquara. Julian Aquara, you know, continues to play well, if you ask me, even though that sack got wiped out from Saturday's game. I didn't think the Lions game was super fun to watch overall, but these guys made it fun, particularly on that fifth possession. It would have been nice to see them get that stop after back-to-back -back sacks uh, where Pascal, Benito Jones, and Julian Aquara were involved in consecutive plays. But in any case, you guys let me know what you think of the film study video, how you evaluated or what you thought of these guys play. This is what I'm going to do during the season is try to highlight different guys that I noticed live with my initial videos and then maybe follow up later in the week with um, studies that show other guys maybe things I didn't notice because it's impossible to notice everything when you're charting the entire game and trying to watch the game and, and notice the game flow. I appreciate you guys' time. If you enjoyed the video, please let me know in the comment section. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. And then um, let me know what you thought of the reaction video if you were able to check it out. I'll link it up um, in the description. It'll be what I do after as many Lions games as possible this year. Try to give you my insights and my thoughts and, and share my game flow and game notes after each game. Appreciate y'all's time. If you think other Lions fans would enjoy this content, please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it on social media to help this video get more reach.